What's up, y'all? I'm B Dougie, and I've got a GitHub feature for you to check out. So if you've been following the GitHub change log and all the different features we've been shipping, you have noticed we've been shipping a lot here at GitHub. And this video series, the GitHub checkout series, is a place for you to meet the people behind the features. And speaking of, I've got Chris Patterson to talk about GitHub Actions. So Chris, why don't you take it away? Thanks for the intro, B Dougie. So today we're gonna to talk about actually three features uh, with GitHub Actions that I think are really cool and kind of work together to enable you to just further improve your workflow automation. So the first one is uh, really more of a set of features that we actually first announced back at Universe and have been steadily improving since then, which are really geared around improving your continuous delivery workflows. Now from the day GitHub Actions launched, you could absolutely drive deployments and continuous delivery through it. But in order to have you know, a continuous delivery workflow that has some of the sort of more compliance or control features that people want, you know, we were definitely missing a few things. So at Universe, we introduced this new concept of environments and specifically environment protection rules. So if you go to your settings tab, you can see here, I've got three different environments for this particular application. I've got a review lab, which is kind of where all the PRs go. We'll take a look at how that happens. I've got a staging environment and a production environment. And you can see in this production environment, I've got two protection rules and one secret. So if I click here, we can see that this environment, in order to deploy to it, has what we call required reviewers. And basically what that says is in order for any job that's in my actions workflow that wants to deploy to this environment to run, one of these people or a team has to approve it. And further, I've said that in order for jobs to deploy to this environment for my workflow, they have to come from the main branch. And so these kind of two protection rules work together to make sure that only code that's made it to main, i.e. has passed through code review and whatever other checks I have on my pull requests, and has been okayed by one of the environment reviewers, gets deployed. Now, along with that, you'll see I've got an environment scoped secret. So actions when we shipped over, over a year ago, has always had secrets and you know it's a great way to use encrypted values as part of your workflow but in order to have a great continuous delivery workflow you really want to have the ability to have a secret that says is is accessible for deploying to say development environments or review labs um, but also you want to have a different secret that maybe has a higher privilege or targets a different count or subscription uh, for deploying from say production and so these features work together to really uh, help you have that compliant or, or you know, secure continuous delivery workflow. So let's take a quick look at how I actually make that happen. So if I go look at my code, I've got a deployment workflow here, and you can see it's got a few different jobs. So I've got one that builds a container that actually has my app, uses a few of our features, caching, uses some great actions from the community like this Docker build X action. But the first thing you'll see here is I've got my deployment review. And so what this does is basically on every pull request event, it will create a new slot in the case of Azure Web Apps for the particular version of the application and give me a view of that so I can go review it directly from my pull request. It integrates nicely. You'll get uh, a box that shows you, you can click on the uh, view the deployment. And then after I merge my pull request, and I'll get a push event and you can see then in this case, I've got deployed to staging, which only runs if I happen to be on main. Uh, and then this deploys my app to a staging environment. And then I've got one that comes after that that's dependent, says it has to go to staging first. So it needs to deploy to staging, which deploys to production. And so if I go look at a run for this particular uh, workflow, I can see I've got one here that says, hey, I've got a merge from pull request 13. Uh, so I want to take a look at that. And I can see here right away that the build was successful and I've got a successful deployment to staging. So right from this view, I can click here, go take a look at the app, make sure things are working properly, make sure whatever change looks good. And then as one of the required reviewers, I can simply click review deployments. I can say, yep, go ahead, you know, deploy to production, click approve and deploy, and that will kick off the job that will deploy my version of the app to production. And so I can build out these different workflows. I can use all of the great features of Actions to really create a very complex and very secure continuous delivery workflow. Now, one more thing that we've noticed and certainly got some feedback on was this is great, except for what happens if I have a busy repository and I've got a bunch of people merging PRs. How do I make sure that only the latest code is deployed to production and maybe only one 
uh, deployment is happening to production at any given time. So in the next few days, we're introducing a new feature that we call uh, serialization or, or a new key in the workflow that we that's called concurrency. And so if I go look here real quick, I'll take a look at a workflow in one of our test repos that uses this new concurrency key. And essentially what it does is it lets me specify um, a string which we call a concurrency group. And this is a repo scoped string. And so in this case, only one of these workflows, this deploy to production workflow, can run at any given time for the concurrency group prod deploy. And I can actually specify the concurrency group at the overall workflow or at the individual job level. And so what that can let me do is, if I specify it, say, at the job level and I say my concurrency key is production, whenever the system goes to start that job, it'll look to see if there's any jobs that are already running against that particular concurrency group. And if there are, it will put this next job in a pending state. And as soon as the previous job completes, the next one will start. Um, the system will also always make sure there's only one job in the pending state. So you're always, in the case of like this production deployment scenario, you're always deploying the latest code. So if another one comes in, well, I've got one pending, it will cancel that pending job and then, you know, pin the next one. And so it really can help you have that very serialized, you know, deployment to a particular environment and make sure always the latest code is deploying in this case. Now you can actually use this for a number of different scenarios because it's a pretty generic feature. So we've implemented one more case where you can actually control that behavior I mentioned. Um, so I talked about how we'll cancel pending. Well, I can also cancel, have it cancel in progress run. So if we take this example where I've got a pull request workflow and I always wanna make sure that only one workflow is running for a given pull request at a time. Uh, and, and if I update that pull request with say a new code, I wanna kill anything that's running and just start the latest ones because it's you know letting say potentially very long test suites run, um, just burns compute, burns your minutes and, and you just don't need them running. And so what I can do here is I can set the group to say, in this case, what I would probably do is set the group to something like github.head ref. And so whatever the head ref is for the PR, that's gonna be my concurrency group. And I'm gonna tell it to cancel in progress. And so what that'll do is whenever a pull request is triggers this particular workflow, we'll look at the concurrency group head ref, we'll start it. If another update, another event comes in for the pull request for the same group, we will cancel anything that's running and start the next one. And so you can really have, you know, res you know conserve your minutes and make sure you only have that say one thing running for the pull request. So we really think this concurrency feature is super useful for a variety of different scenarios. The last thing I wanna talk about is a new, another feature we've added to really help you improve the security of your workflows. So most people, when you talk about security, you always wanna think about least access. And so when we launched GitHub Actions, we know, knew we wanted a generic automation platform that people could do all sorts of things on with GitHub. However, and to do that, that means we needed some way of providing you authentication back to the repository to update PRs or add labels or even push, push code back. However, there's so many cases where a workflow simply doesn't need those broad permissions. And so we've added a new permissions key that you can actually set again at the overall workflow or the individual job level that will let you control the individual permissions that the token, the GitHub token secret that we generate automatically for you has. And so in this particular case, I've got a very basic workflow that cleans up my review lab environment. And I've only given it the ability to read the source because it doesn't need to do anything else. And so this can allow you to do some interesting things like maybe you have a, one job in your workflow that uh, needs to have, you maybe runs something that's untrusted and you want to give it very narrow access. You're like, I don't want any, any, um, any ability to do anything other than read the code. And then you could have a second job that does something that's more trusted, and so you give it a broader set of access. So we think that you can combine these different permissions in different ways to really make sure your workflows only do what they need to do. And further, um, one of the things that we're currently working on that we hope to roll out uh, the week of the 19th is the ability to actually set a setting at the organization and repository level that forces the baseline scenario to be code read only. 
And so you can basically set up GitHub Actions such that instead of the token having broad permissions, it has very narrow permissions always. And then you explicitly elevate up in the workflow itself. You know, all logs log the exact permissions the workflow gets now. So you can see that. And we also push this into the audit log. So you really have a lot of you know, control and a lot of understanding of exactly what your workflow is doing and exactly what those permissions are. And so we think these are some great features uh, that really help improve the overall security of actions that help you have good, secure, compliant, continuous delivery workflows. And also just another really nice feature to help you make your workflows more powerful. That is amazing. You covered so many different features and some of them I didn't even know about until this call right now. So I'm looking forward to get my hands on these permissions as well as some of the other uh, features. Uh, but I did have one question. Where can people keep up, keep tabs on the changes that GitHub Actions as well as ask questions and uh, get their concerns raised? So that's a great question. Uh, first off, the best place to keep track of what's coming is the change log. Uh, the get, we put all of these new features go into the GitHub change log. They should all have document links to documentation. And also the change log now has tags, which is a new thing we've added recently. So you can easily go through and you can click and filter to just changes for actions if that's all you care about. As far as talking to the product team or providing feedback, the GitHub community forum for actions um, under Code to Cloud is a great place. We have a, an awesome community there uh, that does a great job to answer questions. I myself spend at least uh, an hour or two every week answering questions there. Um, and I also try to keep track of when things are asked for and when we ship them to go back and comment against those threads to let you know. Yeah, yeah. And I have to, myself, I have to get back in there. I've got some tabs open of questions that I have answers for. Because as you know, I do lots of action works um, and I'm super excited to add this, these features to my workflow. So Chris, thanks for your time. And uh, folks, uh, if you enjoyed this, let us know below. Uh, if you have questions, head over to the community forum. And uh, if you want to watch the next video, stick around.